Continuing on in section 8.7, if f of c equals d for a function f, then we can conclude that the graph of f passes through the point c, d. So f of x is usually what we have. And instead of an x, we have some number c. And that gives us d. And remember that f of x is just like y. So it's like we have y equals d. And so we talked about this a little bit in the earlier section. Uh, but we can pull order pairs from these points. We're going to write a linear function g given that g of 0 equals 9 and g of 3 equals negative 6. So here, instead of g of x equals 9, we have g of 0. That's telling us that x equals 0. And in my ordered pair, that goes first. We also know that g of x is the same as y. So y equals 9. That goes second in my ordered pair. So I have an ordered pair of 0, 9. The same works in my second pair here. g of x means x equals 3. And because g of x is just like y, I have y equals negative 6. So x equals 3 and y equals negative 6. So my second ordered pair is 3, negative 6. Now, just like we've been doing uh, for the past few sections, since section 8, uh, 4, I believe, we can find our slope from any two points. Again, our framework is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It's our change in y's minus our change in x's. There's my framework. I'm going to pick one of my points to put first. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to do negative 6 first. Negative 6 minus 9 for my two y's. Since I did negative 6 first, I'm going to use 3 first. 3 minus 0. In my numerator, I get negative 15. In my denominator, I get 3. So my slope, when I reduce there, I can divide both by 3, and I get negative 5. But for slope-intercept form, I need not only my slope, but I need my intercept. And we actually already have our intercept. Remember, anytime x is 0, our y value is our b value, or our y-intercept. So here, my y-intercept is 9. My framework here for slope-intercept form is y equals slope times x plus intercept. I know my slope is negative 5, and my intercept, we said, was 9. And it's positive 9, so plus 9. So y equals negative 5x plus 9. Uh, we've been doing that for a couple sections now. The only difference with this is since it's a linear function, g, we're going to rewrite it as g of x equals negative 5x plus 9. So instead of writing y equals, we're going to label it as g of x instead of y. It's the only part that's really different here. Again, feel free to pause here and give these a try if you'd like. We're going to write a linear function that satisfies the given conditions. f of 0 equals 1. f of 0 means 0 is my x and y is 1. y is the same as f of x, and since that equals 1, that means my y value is 1. And usually we have f of x, but instead of x here, we had 0, so that's my x-coordinate. Same thing here. It's usually f of x, so x is 2. And f of y is the same as y, and that equals 9. So 9 is my y value. Now that we have our two ordered pairs, Okay, we're going to find our equation the same way that we have been, slope-intercept form. We keep our framework. We need to find our slope and find our intercept. Our intercept we have because x is 0, my y value is my b, or my y-intercept. So I'm going to have a plus 1 there because 1 is positive. I just need to find my slope now, and in order to do that, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is how I find my slope. So I set up my framework, and now I substitute in my values. Again, it doesn't matter which point we put first as long as we're consistent. So I'm going to do 9 first minus 1. Since I did 9 first, I have to do 2 first minus uh, 0. 
9 minus 1 is 8 over 2 minus 0 is 2. And when I reduce that, I get a slope of 4. So here I have 4x plus 1. Number 8 here, same idea. We have f of x equals negative 7. f of x is the same thing as y. So I have y negative 7, and that's the second part of my ordered pair. I also have here x and 0. So my x value is 0. In my second data point here, again, f of x equals 5. f of x is the same as a y, so my y value is 5, and my x was replaced by a 6, so x is 6. Now that I have my two points, I'm trying to find a slope and an intercept. My intercept I know because x is 0, y intercept is negative 7, that's my b value. Again, when x is 0, the y-coordinate is always our y-intercept. To find my slope, though, I need to use my slope formula. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Doesn't matter which y we pick first. I'm going to do 5 first, and I'm going to plug it into my framework. So I'm going to do 5 minus negative 7 minus a negative gives me a plus. Since I did 5 first, I'm going to use 6 first. I have to use them from the same ordered pair, and then 0. 5 plus 7, or minus a negative, gives me a 12. 6 minus 0 is 6, and that reduces to 2. So my slope is going to be 2. I can substitute that in, and my y-intercept in. So my framework is y equals slope times x plus our intercept. And I can substitute in the values I know. My y-intercept is negative 7, and my slope is 2. So y equals 2x minus 7. Number 9 here, same idea. Again, instead of having g of x equals 16, g of x can be replaced with a y, and I get y equals 16. Also, x was replaced with negative 6, so negative 6 is my x value. Same thing here, we started off with g of x, and that equals negative 5. My x value is 0, and g of x is the same thing as y, so y equals negative 5. Again, because x is 0, this is my y-intercept, and I can find my slope. Here's my framework. I'm going to take 16 minus negative 5. Since I use 16 first, I have to use negative 6 first minus 0. Remember, it's y minus y, so second coordinate minus second coordinate over x minus x, first minus first. In my numerator, I get 21. In my denominator, I get negative 6. So here this doesn't reduce to a whole number, but I can simplify it a little bit. I can take a 3 out of both of these. So 21 divided by 3 gives me 7, and negative 6 divided by 3 gives me negative 2. So my slope here is negative 7 over 2. And again, we usually just put that negative out in front instead of in the numerator or the denominator. So my framework is going to be y equals slope times x plus my intercept. And I can substitute those values in. I know my slope is negative 7 over 2, and my y-intercept is negative 5. So y equals negative 7 over 2x minus 5. Uh, here, and I have to go back and do this on the last ones, because we're looking for a function, I need g of x equals negative 7 over 2x minus 5. Because we're looking for function g, uh, and here I've been doing these all as y's, and it's hard to differentiate which ones are which. So here, uh, this one was f of x, so again I'm going to rewrite that as f of x equals 4x plus 1. Remember, we can replace um, f of x with y and y with f of x. So, same thing here, because these are f's, this is going to be f of x equals 2x minus 7. Sorry about that.
Don't forget to put them back in function form because that's what we're trying to do here. And number 10, I have r of x equals 3 and r of x equals 3. My ordered pair here, r of x, we can replace with y. So I have y equals 3 and my x is negative 7. So one point is negative 7, 3. Again, r of x equals 3. So here, y is 3 and x is 0. Because x is 0, this is my y-intercept, or my b value. And now I need to find my slope. It's our change in y's over our change in x's. 3 minus 3. Since I used this one first, I'm going to use 0 first, minus negative 7. So minus a negative gives me plus 7. And I'm going to have 0 divided by 7, which is just 0. So my slope here is 0. My framework, y equals slope times x plus my intercept. Here, guys, my slope is 0. So when I substitute that in, and then my intercept, 0 times x is just 0. And 0 plus 3 is just 3. So here, guys, this is going to be a horizontal line. And we can see that from our points. At negative 7, 3, we have a point, And at 0, 3, we have a point. Horizontal line. And we know horizontal lines only have one variable, just a y. Last thing I'm going to do here, though, is I'm going to put it in function notation. So I'm going to make it r of x equals 3. And that's my equation there. And that's all I have for section 8.7.